Today we are going to be talking about Swedish death cleaning and this is a topic that sounds really morbid but I actually love the idea of it. I was inspired to do this video because I have seen this going around the internet a lot lately and people are calling it the newest minimalism trend and I wanted to weigh in on it. I saw that Abundantly Minimal had done a video on this and also the Mustards in their daily show talked about this and I just kind of wanted to add in my two cents worth on this video, so let's jump right in. Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day today. My name is Ashlyn. If you are new here, I make videos three times a week about minimalism and intentional living. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, definitely be sure to subscribe below. Like I said, today we're talking about Swedish death cleaning and this idea is based on a book by Margaret Magnusson. I'm sure I just butchered that name, but bear with me. Uh, the book is called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And what I love about this book and just this idea of Swedish death cleaning in general is it talks about kind of decluttering and just simplifying your life as you go through life so that when you die, your death isn't a burden on your friends, your family, and your relatives. I have personally in my own family seen uh, just literally my extended family ripped apart over the death of my great grandma and that was really hard for me to watch and I love the idea of really just making your wishes and your intentions and your life just simple to understand so that when you pass away it isn't a burden on everyone you love. In the book, Margaret talks about really trying to begin simplifying when you reach around the age of 60 to 65, but for me personally, I feel like you could begin the process of simplifying your life a lot sooner. Things like having a will, things like decluttering your life, those are things that you can get value from right now. And I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, none of us really know how much longer we have left to live on this earth. And so by preparing yourself now, um, you can not only enjoy the benefits of simplicity in your life today, but you know, in that eventual day when you do pass it away, because we all do, your friends and family won't be burdened by, you know, the things you leave behind and instead they'll be able to take away the legacy that you leave and they'll be able to remember uh, you as the person and who you are, not the stuff that you left behind. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the process. How does one Swedish death clean? And it really begins similarly to decluttering and minimalism in general and it's just decluttering your life. You're getting rid of anything that isn't something that you love or isn't sentimental or isn't necessary. So you are getting rid of those old t-shirts that you never wear, the books that you never read, the gift that you were given that you never use. Those are things that aren't bringing you joy in this life and won't bring uh, you know, people who are left behind after you pass away that it won't bring them joy either. So uh, just getting rid of those things off the bat. Now she does suggest that you keep some keepsakes and sentimental items as reminders of those treasured memories that you have. And I totally agree with this to a certain extent. I do think that sometimes things that we own can definitely help us to call to mind those memories but at the same time you want to be really thinking this through and don't call everything sentimental just because your hand at one time touched it so really think through like does this item recall to mind a specific memory do i like that specific memory is there another item that might serve that same purpose better? Would a picture serve to remind me better of this event than the ticket stub from the event? Those are things that you want to think through. At the end of the day, things like ticket stubs, while they might be sentimental, aren't necessarily uh, the best way to remember things and so kind of keep that in mind. These days we have the ability to photograph almost everything and I think that's the best way that you can remember something but at the same time, if there is a bowl that you picked up when you hiked the Grand Canyon and every time you look at that bowl it reminds you of 
you know, when you hike to the Grand Canyon uh, and you love that bowl and you think it's beautiful and you use it, then keep the bowl, you know? Just kind of be intentional and really think through what you're buying or what you're keeping in your life and why you're keeping it. One of the things that I absolutely love that she talks about in this book that I just feel like we don't talk about often enough, especially for those of us who are younger, is keeping a file of your important passwords and just important documents and having, you know, a couple other trusted people who know uh, where those documents are, I think that is really, really valuable because it happens all the time when someone will pass away and nobody knows, you know, is there a will? Where do we find that will? We need to get into the bank account of this person as part of like the last, um, like will and testament and stuff like that. And if there's nothing like that left behind, it can be a real burden on the people who are left behind. So I highly, highly suggest that if you don't have a will, make a will. If you don't have a document of, you know, the important, you know, passwords to your IRA, to your bank account, to, you know, a savings account, to any investments, to your Facebook so that if you want, uh, you know, others to be notified of your death, somebody can get on there and, you know, let people know that way. There are a lot of different aspects that you should really consider, but I think that that idea of really putting together uh, that document and having it in, you know, a specific place with people who know how to access it in the event that you pass away, I think that's awesome. And to be honest, I wish that a lot of us you know, people who are younger, not, you know, in our 60s or whatever, would consider doing that as well. Before I get on to a couple questions that I would suggest that you consider just kind of surrounding this topic, one of the other questions that I love that she uh, asks people to ask is, uh, will anyone be happier if I save this? And I think for the vast majority of things, it helps us to realize that I'm the only reason why this is still in my life. And that if I do pass away, nobody's necessarily going to want it. And I think that gives us a great perspective of we do have the power and the control to be able to let go of things in our life and really to get rid of them and move on. And that's a good thing. So I just kind of wanted to end this by giving you some questions to think through and just kind of sharing some final thoughts. But the first question that I would suggest that you ask yourself is, if I were to pass away today, would my family know what my final wishes were? Would they know if I had a will or where to find it? Uh, would they know where to access important files? Those are, I think, all really good questions that you can be asking yourself and it's all really related to your last wishes. So does my family know my last wishes? And if the answer to that is no, then maybe it's time for you to start doing some Swedish death cleaning of your own, make that file, get yourself a will, it's not expensive and you know, that can definitely help a ton. Uh, make sure that you have your all of your important passwords and accounts in one place. And make sure you bring in a trusted family member or friend to be able to know where to access those important files. And then I guess the last question I would ask you to consider is when I die, will what I leave behind be a burden to my friends and family members? And if the answer to this is yes, maybe it's time for you to do some decluttering of your own and really just evaluate the things that you own. Do they bring you joy? Are they sentimental? Do you use them? If it doesn't fit into that category, then let go of it. And not only will you be able to experience a huge sense of relief because, you know, it's no longer in your life and really we don't realize it, but those things that don't add value that we keep in our lives really do burden us. And in addition to that personal benefit, 
it also helps you to be able to, you know, when you die, hopefully that's years and years and years in the future. But for the time when that day comes, it makes the job for your friends and family a lot easier. So the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning. I think that it's a really important concept. I like the idea of being able to prepare your life so that you won't be a burden when you pass away. I, like I said, have seen families torn apart over the passing of a loved one and just the chaos that can ensue if the last wishes of the person are not known. So definitely take that other people into your life in consideration. Really evaluate like, is what I'm doing best for them? And I think that the idea of you know, preparing that doc, those documents for when you pass away, your last wishes is a fantastic idea. I also think that decluttering your life now is a fantastic idea. So do both. Anyways, guys, I am interested to know what you guys think about Swedish death cleaning. Is it something that you have heard about before? Is it a concept you're familiar with? Do you agree with it? Disagree? Do you have any thoughts? Definitely let me know. Leave those in the comments below like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe today if you haven't anyways guys i hope that you have a fantastic day today and i'll see you in the next video